Hi, my name is James Hugel and I'm here to demonstrate V-Remote. I'll be using an iPad Pro with an S3L. The app opens with the network connection window where we enter the IP address and password for the console and tap connect to sign in. V-Remote has four main views. The console view, which always shows the console's screen, the focus view, the fader view, and the command view. The console view has a number of subdivisions called regions. Tapping one of the light blue regions will cause an immediate action. Tapping a dark blue region presents the controls in that region in the focus view where we can then operate its controls. We move faders like this, rotary encoders, and buttons just need a tap. Some buttons need a double tap, which is to help prevent accidents with certain controls, like phantom power, for example. Any control with this requirement has a fine double border around it and will issue a pop-up reminder if we only tap it once. Tapping a value field automatically opens the numpad. This displays the parameter name and its value, which can be nudged up and down with the blue nudge buttons, or a new value can be entered. Some regions include relevant controls from elsewhere. For example, the high pass filter with the EQ graph. And there might also be some additional shortcut buttons like copy and paste and navigation aids. Any editable name in the focus view can be edited by double tapping it. We use touches in the edit field for cursor control. The keyboard can be invoked at any time using the keyboard button in the command view it can be used as if it were the console's actual keyboard to initiate searches, select pages with the function keys, and so on. The presets controller opens whenever we tap a presets folder, and the controls associated with the type of preset that we selected are highlighted in the console view. Selecting a fader block region automatically starts a scan for the names of the displayed channels and labels each channel slot at the bottom of the fader. The three rows of buttons above the faders are the safe, solo, and mute buttons. The modifier buttons here in the command view cater for selection of multiple channels, setting default values, fine control of rotary encoders, and so on. They work exactly the same way as their counterparts on the console. Double tapping a modifier will latch it on, which is indicated by the flashing border. The right-click button is equivalent to right-clicking the mouse to invoke some sort of drop-down menu. Menus are always presented in the focus view in a scrollable, zoomable window that enables us to access the entire console screen and then the focus view reverts once we've made our selection. It's possible to operate more than one control at a time. Because the controls have to be driven by a single mouse pointer, the movement isn't quite as smooth as using only one control, but it works very effectively nonetheless. The Channel Selector is a V-Remote tool that enables us to locate and select channels easily. It's like a mini layout of all the input and output channels. Moving the touch along a row of channels displays the channel names in a pop-up. Moving from row to row makes the console follow. When the required channel is displayed in the pop-up, we simply release to select that channel. So, here we have the graphic EQ, which can be expanded and scrolled horizontally, and we can use all the modifier functionality as you would expect. Anytime we encounter a list, the list items can be selected renamed, reordered, and so on. Scrolling is achieved by simply dragging the list, and the red box in the console view indicates the section of the list in focus. The app will automatically use the scroll bar buttons if necessary, so we only need to use one type of scrolling gesture. By now, the general mode of operation should be easy to see, so I'll just look briefly at some of the other console pages. I should mention that the user guide is built into the app and it's always accessible from the information window. You don't need the internet to access it.
The filing pages accommodate the full filing functionality, including loading a new show file without disconnecting. It's important to know the basics of working with the patch bay. Firstly, there are two different ways to scroll, either by dragging the top, like this, or the channel list up and down, or if we begin somewhere in the assignment area and drag past its darker red border, then auto-scrolling begins in that direction. The further past the border we go, the faster the scrolling becomes. You can see the red box in the console view, which shows the section of the patch bay in focus. A double tap makes the border bright red, which means we have clicked the mouse. And all system alerts come up like this. The plugin controller presents the plugin window in a scroll view, which can be scrolled and zoomed. Buttons only need to be tapped once, and we use a double tap and drag for any continuously variable controls. If we rotate the device, the app moves to landscape mode, which offers the whole console screen in a scroll view and works the same way as the plugin controller. Magnification is up to eight times. We can freely move between portrait and landscape mode at any time. The media page on the S3L and the options pages should be self-explanatory. I'll just talk briefly about the energy save control. The audio level meters, which update continuously, are responsible for the bulk of the energy consumption. When the slider is at the left end, full performance remains in effect all the time. As we move the slider to the right, you'll see the resultant frame rate when energy save becomes fully active. Once there's been no touch activity for a few seconds, the frame rate will gradually decrease. Any touch activity immediately returns to full performance. This can reduce energy consumption by more than 80%. Well, that's an extremely brief look at the basics of the app. V-Remote has very carefully formed layouts that have been designed from an audio engineering perspective. There are numerous optimizations that assist in providing a very smooth and responsive user interface. The use of the console's graphics provides an instant familiarity and very small learning curve. There are many assistive processes happening behind the scenes which lead to a precise level of control. Subtle differences between versions of the venue software and different models of the console are all taken care of, so there's no need for any kind of configuration. You can use vRemote with a standalone software if you have reason to use the app but don't have access to a console. The best aspect of the app is the freedom it provides, especially for things like tuning and setting fallback mixes from the artist's perspective. It provides access to the console's entire functionality and should be a very valuable asset to any audio engineer using venue consoles. Thanks for watching.